Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at the new E-Flight uh, Timber and uh, I have to say this is a plane that I never really figured I was going to be um, have in my hangar and when it first came out about a year ago I looked at it and I'm like oh okay it's kind of cool but um, it's not a it's not a real plane it's not a um, it's not a J3 Cub, a Super Cub or even a Carbon um, carbon Cub, Sport Cub, anything like that. It's not even a, it's not even a real airplane, it's a made up airplane by E-Flight. Um, okay, so it does short takeoff and landings. Okay, that's kind of cool. I don't see why I want that. Um, so I just kind of crossed it off my list of things that I'd ever want in an airplane. Well, if you've been following any of my other videos, you know that I'm working on a, um, on a Hobby King B-17. So it's a very large uh, tail dragger and I realized that I actually have almost no experience um, taking off tail draggers in the grass in the five years I've been flying. So I joined a, uh, a local uh, flying club with a grass strip and I thought, you know, I've been flying at soccer fields and stuff like that, so I've been hand launching everything. So I'm gonna join a field that's been groomed and I'm gonna be able to fly my warbirds off there and get some tail dragger experience. Well, I, it didn't take long for me to find out that anything I put in the grass and applied any throttle to, it would instantly tip over, uh, you know, nose over into the ground, and you wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't going to be able to fly. So everything, I'm right back to where I'm at before, which is hand launching and then just belly landing in the grass. So I've yet to really accomplish any significant amount of tail dragger takeoffs. So I started looking at saying, what can I do about that to fix this kind of gap in my, my training? And so I looked at the, um, the Hobby Zone um, Sport Cup. Um, beautiful airplanes, modeled after a real aircraft, red and white. It takes the, uh, the floats that used to be on the, uh, the Super Cub, which I, I learned to fly on, and I love my Super Cub. I love flying off water with it. And um, so I started looking at those. It's about $200 new uh, for the, uh, the bind and fly version. And then I'm like, well, I really want to have lights on it so I can fly in the evening. So you, so you go around and you look up a pair of lights and add that to the bill. And oh, that's, you know, now I need floats. So you add floats to the list. And oh, well, you know, you need larger tires because uh, people have trouble with the smaller tires on that. Pretty soon I came to the conclusion that I've actually way exceeded the cost of the timber, which really means this is a really, really good value. The aircraft is a little bit larger than the Sport Cub. It is uh, 1.5 meters. Um, the flaps are already installed in function, and they're slotted flaps, which means that the, um, they actually are more effective than the flaps on the uh, Sport Cub. So, um, I happen to find this one. This is a used one. It's actually a custom painted uh, timber. I found this on the RC groups, um, and it arrived just a few days ago. And so I'm really excited to uh, share the unboxing with everyone, because I've yet to actually see this thing um, uh, since it came in the mail. All I did is make sure I opened it up, it says, yeah, parts are there, closed it back up again, and I'm gonna open it up with you guys. So let's go ahead and let's move the, uh, the timber box off to the side and look at what's inside this uh, E-Flight timber box. All right, so the first layer of the box has been removed, and now let's pop open and let's see what the, uh, what's inside here, so. Okay, so we have the, um, we have the timber out of the, um, Kind of what I consider the uh, the exterior box, or the cardboard box. Now we're left with the styrofoam pieces, and what's weird about this one is actually there's like two sides of it. Um, there's actually parts on one side, and we're gonna flip this over, and the rest of the parts are on the other side. So that's kind of unique. I don't think I've ever had that with an airplane before. So let's kind of take a look and see what we have here. Uh, first up, it looks like we have um, we have our one wing. Uh, this looks to be the um, this looks to be the uh, the left side wing. Servos are hanging out here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's take this out of the uh, protective uh, wrapper here, shall we? Let's take a look. This is our first uh, first time looking at the uh, the custom painted um, components. There we go. This is the uh, this is indeed the left wing. As you can see, it's kind of painted like a seafoam green color, kind of like a greenish teal. And one thing I really like about this aircraft, uh, which uh, was a big deciding factor, and it was the pre-installed lights, so I don't have to try to cut into the foam and install these myself. Um, they also have, uh, of course, the red and green navigation lights and a uh, strobe light on the uh, the side. Really cool feature there. 
And you can also see that the, uh, the slats have already been installed. Um, these will really assist with uh, short takeoff and landing. Uh, unfortunately, that uh, is gonna be a little difficult to work with if, for me um, for learning how to um, basically do um, scale takeoff for the B-17. So I'll have to kind of really manage uh, my throttle and elevator inputs for more scale, um, longer takeoffs uh, with these slats installed. Because with these on there, they'll actually produce quite a bit more lift and the aircraft's gonna wanna jump into the air a little bit. So I'm gonna have to uh, really control my, um, my inputs for nice scale takeoffs when I want to. And then when I really wanna do a stall takeoff, um, I most certainly can do so as well. Uh, the other nice feature, of course, is that the, the, uh, the flaps have already been installed. You can see here that the, um, the servos for the, both the flaps and the ailerons are already recessed and covered up with these nice um, little panels here. And since these are split flaps, they actually go down in a way from the, uh, from the wing surface. And as you can see, that they're actually uh, open, which will allow some airflow to actually pass through them. Uh, almost similar to like you'd see on an airliner if you've ever sat by the window seat and you watch how the um, the flaps kind of go out and then they go down. Very similar on this one too. Um, as you see, that's a huge, huge flap surface there. So, all right, well that covers the uh, the wing. You can see the servos for. Um, let's see, this is. Uh, I'm not sure which one. I'm thinking this is lights. That's lights, aileron, and flaps. The lights actually have like a little light bulb looking symbol on them, they don't say light on there. So, all right, let's go ahead and move this off to the side. Next up, we have um, some of the float pieces here, as well as the instructions, uh, rear tail wheel. Okay, there we go. You see we have the, uh, we have the hangers, we have the floats, uh, we have the retainers for the floats, we have the, uh, the rear landing gear, some screws, the spinner, and the, um, the retainer for the, uh, for the front for the wings. Uh, looks like we got a couple plastic screws in here. I think that's what hold the wings on. We'll find out. So that is, oh, and then we have some extra decals in here too. These were the uh, underwing black decals that were not used for this particular airplane. So let's go ahead and set these off to the side and flip the box over. All right, so now we have the, uh, the other side of the box, and this is actually what has more of the pieces in it than the other side. We have the wings, we have fuselage, tail, landing gear, and I'm guessing floats in here as well. So let's go ahead and start unpackaging this, and let's take a look at what we got here. First up is the, uh, the right side wing, which looks exactly like the left side wing, so we won't spend too much time on this. Yep, so here we have the uh, the opposite side wing, um, exactly the same as the other side, except for you got a green navigation light, and you don't have the, uh, the call-out letters on the uh, wing. Otherwise, it looks exactly the same. We'll go ahead and set that off to the uh, side. All right, next up, looks like the next easiest thing to get out is probably going to be the floats. Here we go. Here are the floats, and what's cool about these is they actually have a, um, they have a water rudder installed as well as a spring activated um, kind of a um, little clock spring in there to keep the, um, the rudder from getting caught up on anything. So if you hit any debris or anything, it just pops up out of the way. And then it uses a little piece of fishing line attached to the rudder so you, the water rudders will operate. Um, if you've ever flown an airplane um, without those on the water, you'll find out that it is incredibly difficult to try to keep the thing going straight and taxi on back and forth. So. Uh, they also have a little bit of a splash shield on salt here, as well as um, uh, some real nice features here that look more like a hull of a boat rather than just a flat pontoon. So uh, really cool float. Uh, really excited about uh, actually having these included with the kit. I don't have to buy these separately like you do um, with the, uh, the Super Cub or the Sport Cub. So great value that you get with the timber that you don't get with the other airplanes because of what it comes with the box. Let's go ahead and uh, set these off to the side. There are two of them here. Uh, since they are the same, I'm just gonna show one. Okay, next up, uh, we have some, I'm um, not sure exactly what these are. I believe, let's go ahead and get them out, take a look. All right, here we have a couple pieces that have been wrapped up together. This is the, uh, the carbon fiber spar that will go in between the wings to help give it support. If you remember from before, one of my tips is always make sure this plat this uh, tape is far away from any of the surfaces of the airplane uh, because you can really destroy the uh, the finish on an airplane really quick. 
couple other pieces in here, see if we can get them out. Okay, so we got the rest of the pieces out of there. Uh, we have some components for the floats. These are, um, these are part of the struts uh, to help with the floats to um, kind of keep them stability. You also have um, two other supports here for the, uh, for the floats. Um, these will all go together into one assembly and that these will create a pretty rigid uh, float setup rather than just having some thinly bent uh, wires. So a really robust uh, system on the, uh, the floats on the timber. You also have a, uh, another carbon fiber spar. I'm guessing this is probably going to be for the, uh, the horizontal stabilizer. Okay, next up, we've got a couple other pieces here. They're taped in, so we've got to be careful with those. And I do have to say, for a used airplane, this has been packed remarkably well. Um, this is basically exactly like you would see it right from, um, right from Horizon Hobby. All right, we have the um, we have the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, nothing really special here. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of show this together here. Um, looks like I got a small piece of um, of paint that lifted off, unfortunately. So I'll have to get some touch-up paint for that. Otherwise, nothing really terribly unique here. Um, otherwise, they're joined together by a plastic piece here for the uh, for the elevators. Uh, a couple screws will hold this in place here. Um, nothing really unique. So we'll go ahead and set this off to the side. Okay, coming up to almost the end of the unboxing, and it really, it's amazing how many pieces there are, but knowing how well um, Horizon Hobby and e -flight really do on everything, this airplane will not take terribly long to assemble. Uh, for instance, uh, like my Hobby King B-17, uh, months really to put it together because of all the detail and stuff that I'm doing to it. This one here, um, I'm hoping to have it back together this afternoon and ready to fly for tomorrow morning. So it's gonna be kind of a, a quick thing to put together, even though there's a lot of really big pieces Everything, a lot of these things are pretty, are pretty well assembled already. So let's go ahead and get the landing gear out. And my airplane, my timber, will be flying off of um, off the ground for quite a while here, so we're gonna be using these landing gear. And one of the neat things about the way this gear is set up is they actually have springs in them so that uh, they really will cushion the, um, the landing. And they have these gigantic soft foam uh, Tundra tires on here. So these should work very well on the, um, on the surface that I have to work from. Uh, the uh, field so I'm really they may look eh, I'm not gonna lie uh, they look kind of dorky on the airplane but they will work for what I need them to do so I'm willing to say all right I'll live with them until I, I become proficient at grass takeoff and these things are coming off and I'm putting the floats on uh, we live right around a lot of water including Lake Michigan we'll be using a lot of float operation as soon as we get proficient with these guys okay I think it's the last thing we have in this box it's gonna be the fuselage let's go ahead and get that out Okay, so now we have the uh, we have the fuselage out of the box. Um, you can see this is uh, it's been definitely custom painted. It's quite a bit different than the uh, the out of box one that you would get uh, directly from E Flight. And I kind of really like this uh, the paint scheme. It's definitely unique. It's a little different than what's out there. Um, it may not have been the colors that I probably would have picked right away, but when I saw it, I really really liked how this uh, this airplane looked. So uh, one of the really cool features again about this aircraft is. The, uh, the addition of the lights. We have a rotating beacon on the top and the bottom that have already been pre-installed. Back here we have uh, two little uh, uh, receivers here that you can um, put the uh, water rudders in. That will work down there. And otherwise, nothing really too unique. This does have an AR636A with AS3X, as well as safe select. Um, you have to change the, um, the procedure that you bind the aircraft and that will either allow you to have um, safe select on or off. A typical normal bind operation, uh, safe select default is in the off position. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's see, let's go to the front here. Pretty good size prop, nothing really uh, special about it. We'll have a cool spinner that will go on the front here. Um, otherwise, this also has uh, two LED landing lights pre-installed, which is another really great feature that I like about the Timber. It's all the little things that were added to this aircraft. Uh, right from the factory that I don't have to worry about that really made this thing uh, stand out uh, in comparison to a lot of the other aircraft out there. Um, even though, yeah, it looks, it doesn't look the best because it's not a real airplane, but that really allowed uh, the designers to kind of work around some um, kind of some aerodynamic issues where they said, you know, we can really concentrate on a stall aircraft and not really have to worry about making it scale correct. So I'm sure I'll get over uh, the fact that it isn't a real airplane once they start flying it, because for the most part, everybody you talk to really loves this aircraft. They love the way it flies. Um, it really handles conditions quite well, 
and people really start to really enjoy the uh, the stall takeoff and landing capabilities. And now this can be something new for me. All right, we'll take a look inside here real quick. What have we got? Well, of course, we have a, uh, a number of wires that are already uh, bundled up inside here. We have, this must be uh, the connections for, um, this is the Y connection for all the wings. Uh, we have lights and we have ailerons ailerons, we have flaps, flaps, aileron, everything, what's nice about this one is the uh, the previous owner color coded everything so that makes it really easy to look, to um, assemble on the field. Now one thing that I will do uh, probably differently is I'm going to add, uh, there's some quick connects that you can add in between the, um, the servo wires here between the fuselage and the wings and that way so you basically got a ribbon connection so you apply everything in, you plug those the, uh, the fuselage and wing in just in one connection and that takes care of everything that leads doesn't mean you you know gets you away from having to install all these little uh, servo wires every single time you fly but otherwise that is it for the um, for the e-flight um, timber by horizon Abbey. and this is of course is the uh, the custom painted version of it which really looks uh, pretty good it's been uh, covered in um, gloss uh, minwax polycrylic so it has a real nice finish to it so the next step is to go ahead and collect up all the pieces that we've unboxed and go ahead and assemble the aircraft and see if we can try to get this thing in the air um, for tomorrow. So that's it. Thanks, guys. I hope you appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Be sure to subscribe. And uh, next up, we'll be uh, reviewing how the aircraft actually performs in the air.